Hello, everyone. We are back again. I hope you have enjoyed the networking time. So now let me introduce you to Lucas Lasota. He is part of the legal team at FSFE, sorry, and is researching in the Humboldt University in Berlin. He will talk about how free software is essential for the future of the internet and an easy way to display copyright and license information in software. In his talk, shaping the future of the internet with free software. Welcome, Lucas. Happy to have you here with us. Uh, hello, Gemma. Hello, Lucas. Really nice Thank to have you here. Thank you very much. I'm really happy also to be here. And I really also thank Open Expo for this great opportunity to uh, talk a little bit about free software and the future of the internet. I will. Okay, great. So, the for the participants so for the people here, remember that you can ask questions in the Q and A while he's preparing the talk, and when he finishes, we will ask all the questions. So, Lucas, you can proceed. Thank you very much. And Thank you. Talk Let me try to share my screen. This screen. And yes, I think. Uh, oh, yes. Right. So thank you very much, everybody, for being here today. Uh, it's an honor uh, to take part in such a nice event. It's my first digital event that I'm taking part, in, and I think it's very nice. I participate in two talks already, and it, I, I learned a lot of new things. So I hope this my, my talk will be useful for you as well. So uh, I'm Lucas Lasota. I work for the Free Software Foundation Europe. We are based uh, in Berlin and we advocate for free software and help people to control technology. Today, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the future of internet and how free software is a central element on that. Well, uh, I prepared this talk. Um, I am a lawyer, I'm not a developer, uh, but I work with a lot of developers, but I don't want to talk about these boring legal topics uh, but we want to have people to understand which kind of internet we want for the future and how we can help people to understand uh, their rights, their copyrights, uh, and their licensing in order that we have a um, healthy digital environment for the internet of the future. And then in the end, we will have also some time for chit chatting, some questions. And I hope uh, you can enjoy. So let's get started. First, uh, I would like to review the concept of free software. And as in the last presentation by Jules, that was amazing. And he used the term free software and open source as um, a synonym. I would also use the terms as a synonym here. But the most important thing is to understand what are the principles behind the term free software? It's not just making the source code available. It's not just putting your, your program uh, free of charge. No, it's not about price, but it's about liberty. It's about freedom. When a determined program that you use allows you to use it, to study the source code, to share it with other people, and to improve the program itself, then we are talking about free software. Uh, and having all these principles, these four liberties for the internet, and we understand that the internet is today's the public space, but is based in all this huge amount of technology. But when we have free software as the backbone of it, and when I say free software, these four freedoms, then we can guarantee that the next generation internet will be the most democratic one. Well, and I say that because we understand that technology is not neutral. Uh, this whole coronavirus situation has shown us how easy people can lose their digital rights and how easy to uh, be controlled by uh, some not very fair uh, app or it how easy people can mislead, mislead 
to uh, a program that tells you uh, or shows you one thing, but in fact are doing another thing. So we want people to control technology and doing by that, we want people to understand that the next generation internet will have human, we in the center of it. Well, we want that the new technology that are being developed in order to populate the internet respect some kind of some principles. And if those technologies respect those principles, we'll have an internet that is human centric, an internet that will respect our human rights, an internet that will respect our privacy and also our data protection. We want that everybody has the same access to the internet and we want that the people feel safe there. And in order to do that, there are some principles that the new technologies should abide and I will show you in the next slides that free software not only abide those principles, but also is the best solution for technologies in order to build the next generation of internet, the internet of humans. The first principle is the principle of openness. We want that the internet uh, be kept open for everybody. We don't want that the internet, uh, the future internet will be kept on hold or in power of few, few people or few uh, enterprises. We want that everybody can join the internet and feel safe there and can collaborate there because uh, the internet is the new public, public, public space. And when I say that, free software, since free software can be shared and used in a non-exclusive way by everyone, it's the perfect development method for new technologies in order to keep the internet open. Well, and keeping the internet open, it's not enough. We need to certify that everybody has the same access, right access to the internet. Just as in the physical world, the digital world sometimes restrict people's rights and the solutions, the, technolog the technological solutions are not designed for everybody. So uh, some people have access to telephones, to computers and to software that are very good for them, but other people who, ha who have uh, special necessities they are not heard and their necessities are, or we can say that some kind, some of web technologies are not compliant with their, tech, with their necessities. Therefore, since free software helps to develop and maintain tailored software that suits everyone's needs and not just some business model, free software abide and help developers and help companies to develop new solutions that respect the principle of inclusivity. Yet, the internet uh, can be very uh, unsafe if we don't know who is in the other side, who, what the program that we are using, we have no clue what the program is indeed doing. Preparatory solutions, uh, that one, uh, which we cannot read the source code, the, the, the source code are intransparent. We, we, we have to take the vendor's uh, word for granted, but we cannot check. One nice principle is, uh, yeah, you can like it, you, you believe in it, but please check. And free software allows anyone to, uh, to check what the, pro uh, the, the program does. So if we want to build an internet that is transparent and safe for everyone, we need software that is available for checking, for audits to everybody. 
when you can check the source code, then you are sure that what one program does or not. And being transparent, we also can check if programs respect our privacy, if the program respect our personality. As we can see, the internet is very, is, in internet is very easy to lose control over your data. It's very easy to control, uh, control of your image over your name. So uh, the future internet, we want to keep it safe for everybody. So privacy and data, data protection are two basic principles that will guide the implementation of new technologies. And since free software development models encourage decentralized solutions, avoiding mass data concentration uh, is the, one of the best ways to protect other people's privacy and data. And since uh, we're talking about the principles here, and we understand that uh, the internet uh, is a is a public uh, space where a lot of people interact, and not just individuals, but also large corporations, governments. Uh, we need to find ways to make people work collaboratively, and in order to have all those principles that we are talking about. It's not enough just to tell that the internet is open for everybody and it's transparent and it respects pe people's privacy and data. If we do not allow people to work and to take part on those development models, because when we have different people working together and making their voice heard, then we can say that in fact, the technology that we are developing they are democratic and they are, um, uh, well, they are based on cooperation. And since free software uh, allows people to develop new software in the best collaborative way, free software will keep the internet as open for cooperation as well. And the last principle that we uh, want to believe that the next generation internet should have is security. Because uh, as we can see, most part of our daily routine, our work, our communication, our data, our interactions are doing through the internet. So we really want that people can interact in those digital environments in a safe and a secure way. However, if we do not have uh, safe mechanisms in order to guarantee that, well, then our trust in those technologies are not good enough. Free software can be checked for security flaws and backdoors. So free software can provide solutions that will keep uh, the internet safe and secure. And well, we talk about the principles that will uh, guide the development of new technologies in the internet. And but where to start? When we talk about, yeah, I want to develop a new technology that will respect all those principles. I want to develop an app for people's smartphone that will uh, guarantee uh, the privacy and secure, it will be uh, private and will be secure and uh, we'll have a collaborative development model. But where to start? Well, since I'm a lawyer, I think it's a good way to start is having your rights and your obligations very well determined. Because when you know uh, what are your rights and what are your, your obligations, you can be confident in order to work since you know 
until when or until which step you can go on how far you can go in order to not um, uh, damage other people's right. Well, and why license and, and copyright is important for the future of internet? Because software is protected by copyright and licensing is the most important uh, legal instrument to transfer rights for other people. So remember when I was talking about the four software freedoms, all those freedoms are protected by licenses. So the whole free software concept uh, is enabled, uh, well, by a series of factors, but licensing, free software license is one of the most important elements in free software. However, uh, during the, the, this current time, uh, I stumbled with a very interesting and a very funny uh, tweet. Um, somebody asked on Twitter, give me a horror story from your special team, five words or less. And uh, clearly a lawyer wrote, no license means public domain. This is one of the first uh, problems that developers and users uh, find when they are using software online. We don't know who is the copywriter and we don't know if we can transmit this, uh, this, progr this program to other people. It's the same with images. It's the same with music that we uh, uh, listen online or movies. Because sometimes licenses, they are hidden and the information, this legal information, are not available to everybody. But license, especially the free software license, protect all of us. When you have the information about copyright and you have the information about license in a very clear, understandable way, you can check, okay, so, I am allowed to transfer uh, this program, this music, this image to other people? Am I allowed to change the software? Am I allowed or am I allowed just to use it? It's forbidden to me to improve the software. License protects, uh, free software license protects the developer, the ve protects you as user and protect all of us. Because through a license, we can guarantee that one software is free software or not. And having uh, that uh, defined or determined, the whole society profits from that. Because it's very clear to everybody that one, one program is free software and therefore people can enjoy those free so these four freedoms or not. But the reality today is sometimes it's not easy to find all those information and not just for users, but for developers as well. People want to use parts of, uh, of software in their program. They cannot because sometimes they don't know about the license. They don't know about the copyright holders. Well, as I'm, I'm, I'm speaking right now, what are the problems? What are uncertainties that sometimes developers or even users con are confronted with? We don't know uh, who uh, possess the, the copyright. Uh, we don't know where to find the license. And a developer, uh, he or she, uh, does not know where to put the information. And if they're developing a, a, a software, they don't know where or which license to use or where to put the license or what are the obligations of the license. But most commonly, they don't know how to make other people aware that they have chosen this license. We at the Free Software Foundation Europe, we want to tackle this problem, this problem in order to make copyright and license information easy to everybody. And we have developed a series of specifications 
through the reuse software initiative. And we want people and especially developers uh, to have a friendly and a very easy way to apply those information. And when we have those information very clear in their software, we are aware that they have chosen one license and who is the, who is the, the copyright of, of, that, of that software. And this will increase the level of legal security in the internet. And increasing the legal security in the internet we are aware of which program is indeed free software and not. And when we, are, when we know that the determined program is free software, we are sure that is the best solution for all those principles that we were talking about until now. Well, and what is the reuse software, or what is re re reuse initiative? Basically, we want that the license and the copyright information will be added to the source code, to the files that compose the source code. It's just two lines of, uh, of we call it comment headers, that developers put in the beginning of their files in the source code. It's made by two lines that explicitly uh, defines which license the developer has chosen, and here we use the SPDX license identifier. And who is the copyright of that particular file? It's that simple. Doing that, uh, these very simple uh, steps can help the entire internet providing uh, legal security. Well, but that seems a little bit uh, theoretical. And people will say, yeah, but uh, it's really that? So yes, it's really that. And in order to, um, to do that uh, and to show that in fact is very simple, we at the Free Software Foundation Europe, we have developed some tools in order to make reuse very easy to adopt. If you are an individual developer, or you are in working a project, or even if you are working in a big corporation, the reuse uh, uh, specifications is adaptable for everybody, not just for individual uh, developer or to the to the big corporations, but all in between. We have developed the helper tool, and this tool. Uh, help people to find the license they want, the, the text license, to add those comment headers, especially when those projects have a lot of, of files. In order to automate the, those projects, the helper tool can add those comment headers automatically. We had prepared also a tutorial, an FAQ, for all those questions, not only regarding to reuse, but re regarded also to the copyright and license information. You can check it online and it's very clear and we, we did break it down in order to make it accessible for everybody. We also uh, think that the reuse initiative is not a small movement, but we want it to become an industry uh, standard. We want that it becomes a serious standard for software development. So everybody who is developing the software, implement, reuse uh, into their project in order to collaborate with everybody. It will make much easier for reuse to share knowledge, to share software, if we have this too little information in our source code. In, in our source code. And of course, we also have developed an API. If you want to check if your project is reused, and also to put a badge in your uh, GitHub or uh, GitLab or other Git instance um, in order to tell other people that your project is reused compliant. And you, may, you might be asking, but who has already adopted the reused? Well, the European Commission has launched the next generation internet initiative 
which funds a lot of projects, more than 120, that is developing new technologies that abide to all those principles that we are talking about. And those, in all those projects, they are being exposed to the reuse initiative. And the Linux kernel uh, has adopted at two, 60 to 70%. Multinational corporations are, uh, are adopting reuse as well. And all of them are profiting from this very simple way in order to have copyright and licensing information uh, well displayed. I hope that your projects, your companies, everybody who is listening can take a look in our website, reuse.software, uh, or in our Git uh, instance, in order to check how easy it is to adopt it and how uh, your project or your software or even your company in your workflow can profit from reuse. And I hope that these informa this informations will be uh, useful for you. So I uh, hope you have some questions and let's chat about uh, the future of the internet, free software, reuse, copyright and license. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your talk, Lucas. Really, really interesting. <laughs> really interesting and useful. Yeah, so Thank if any one of you have a question, remember that you can write in, in the Q&A or you can also write your hand and come to the stage with us. You can come here and ask to, to Lucas. <laughs> yes. Uh, Sometimes people think that uh, licensing copyright information is a boring topic for lawyers. Well, indeed <laughs> it is. <laughs> Uh, but um, we want to make it very simple. So people, because uh, people are applying and using software and they want to know about license and copyright and we want to make it very easy for everybody. Yeah, that's true. You explain in an easy way there. Everyone can understand it and that helps. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's... Uh, yes. Uh, the... I, uh, I, I hope people have answers, uh, questions, be, please be... Yeah, I think there is one question. Yes, a, so a, do you think each product needs to have free license or there are product types which have can be only paid? Well, thank you very much. This is a very good question. But I want just to remember you that when we talk about free licenses, it's about freedom. So it's completely... Uh, okay to have a free software product, but in a paid basis. We have a lot of products that are paid, but they are free software. And and I'm not telling uh, big corporations like, like, like Head, Head Head that are great in making money and their products are open source, are free software. But I'm also talking about smaller products. If you open uh, F-Dried, that is a um, store for free and open source products for your smartphone, for Android devices, you're going to see that there is a lot of products that you need to pay for it. And they are, uh, and they are open source, they are free software. So my position is that I would like to see all products as free software, that products that are paid and not paid, but all of them respect the four freedoms, that are freedoms to uh, use the product, to study uh, the product, to share it, to improve it. Oh, really interesting. Thank you. I hope I, 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 hope I, I can. Yeah, so we have another question. Is FOSS a good way to prepare the world to compete, combine, and reach economical growth against corporations? Uh, well, uh, I, I think that uh, there are corporations and corporations. Yeah, uh, there are corpor there are corporations that develop very nice products, and they are human centric. And we have some very nice examples today, and we want to keep that. So we we envision the next generation internet from those people. We are not against uh, corporations. 
uh, we are we want to those corp all corporations are aware that they can have their products and respect people's freedom. We want to spread this word to the max amount of people and the max amount uh, uh, max amount of corporations, and of course to educate that bad corporations corporations that do not respect digital freedoms, digital rights. And doing that, we want to educate them. So reuse, uh, having these two small lines of information in people's software, people are being developed. We can educate also people, or, or this bad corporation that they do not can exploit those software saying that they don't know about the information because the information is right there in the, in the code. Okay. Thank you, Lucas. Let's see if someone else have an information, have a question to do. Remember that you can also raise your hand and we can invite you to the stage so we can see your face and you can talk with us or you can do it only with the micro. If you prefer not to show your image. Otherwise, you can write the question in the Q&A. Dr. Lucas, are you going to be here later for the networking time? Yes, absolutely. I, I, I will be there. And I hope to chat with some someone uh, in the in the rooms, and of course, uh, I, I don't know, Gemma. I just yes. have one short question for you. Uh, this presentation one will be made available. Yeah, it will be in, your, uh, in YouTube. Or... I think next week. And the YouTube. Yes. Cool. Yes. Uh, next week, right? So uh, you have also my contact, um, and if you don't have any time more today, we also can talk it later. You just send me, a, drop me a message. And we'll okay, be a that would be great. And then later, the same in the tables. If you go to a table, you connect your camera and your mic, and you can talk with the people in the table. You can talk with Lucas and with the rest of the people. <laughs> so you have any other question to Lucas? And if not, I think we can go to the networking. Thank you very much, Lucas, for your presentation. Right. And I would like also to thank you, Gemma, for um, your nice uh, being the middle <laughs> woman here. And I want also to thank Open Expo very much. Uh, it's, it has been a pleasure to be with all, with all of you today. And to the 51 attendees uh, that uh, until now here in Berlin it's already uh, 1930. And you've been very first until now. So thank you, thank Lucas. You very much. See you later. So bye. Bye bye. So now it's time for networking. So you can join the any table here, or you can go to another room and meet other people, talk to people, and use this time to to grow the network. We have here like almost 40 minutes. So connect with people, share, learn, and enjoy. See you tomorrow.